Hey bougie click. Are you a feminine woman? If you are, you may have noticed that masculine women are your biggest haters. Society often places a high value on qualities traditionally associated with femininity, such as empathy, nurturing, cooperation, and emotional intelligence. Women who exhibit these traits may find that they are more readily accepted in social circles, have an easier time forming close relationships, and are often perceived as more approachable and trustworthy. What people won't admit though, is that being pretty is a key factor in being perceived as feminine. Feminine privilege. Feminine privilege is a multifaceted and complex concept that intersects with numerous social, economic, and cultural dimensions. It refers to the advantages or benefits that individuals may receive due to their identification with or expression of traditionally feminine traits or roles. While discussions around privilege often focus on male privilege, it is important to acknowledge that gender dynamics are intricate and that feminine privilege can manifest in various ways, though it is typically context-dependent and influenced by other intersecting factors such as race, class, and sexual orientation. One area where feminine privilege can be observed is in the realm of social interactions and relationships. Society often places a high value on qualities traditionally associated with femininity, such as empathy, nurturing, cooperation, and emotional intelligence. Women and individuals who exhibit these traits may find that they are more readily accepted in social circles, have an easier time forming close relationships, and are often perceived as more approachable and trustworthy. This can lead to stronger social networks and support systems, which are invaluable in both personal and professional contexts. So, while some women may fault the fact that they are too pretty or intimidating as the reason men are not approaching them, it is really that they are too masculine. In professional environments, feminine privilege can sometimes be seen in the way that women and feminine-presenting individuals are often expected or encouraged to take on roles that involve caregiving or emotional labor. For example, women are frequently found in positions such as human resources, nursing, teaching, and social work, where their perceived natural affinity for caregiving and empathy is valued. While these roles are crucial and rewarding, they are often underpaid and undervalued compared to more traditionally masculine roles. However, the expectation and encouragement to take on these roles can sometimes be seen as a form of privilege, as it provides a clear and socially acceptable path for career development. Another aspect of feminine privilege is the societal leniency often granted to women and feminine-presenting individuals in terms of expressing emotions and vulnerability. While men are frequently socialized to suppress their emotions and maintain a stoic demeanor, women are generally allowed more freedom to express a wider range of emotions without facing the same degree of social stigma. This emotional expressiveness can foster deeper connections with others and provide numerous mental health benefits. Moreover, women's emotional openness can be leveraged in leadership positions to create more inclusive and supportive work environments, which can lead to higher levels of team cohesion and productivity. However, it is important to recognize that feminine privilege is not universally experienced and can be significantly mitigated or exacerbated by other intersecting identities. Additionally, the advantages associated with femininity can sometimes come with a double-edged sword. For example, while women may be praised for their nurturing qualities, they may also be penalized for being perceived as too emotional or not assertive enough in professional settings, leading to challenges in career advancement. The concept of feminine privilege also intersects with societal beauty standards and the advantages conferred upon those who conform to them. Attractive women often receive preferential treatment in various aspects of life, from job opportunities to social interactions. This phenomenon, sometimes referred to as the halo effect, can lead to positive biases where attractive individuals are assumed to possess other desirable traits such as intelligence, competence, and kindness. However, this form of privilege is highly contingent on adherence to narrow and often unattainable beauty ideals, which can perpetuate harmful stereotypes and contribute to issues such as body image dissatisfaction and discrimination against those who do not fit these standards. Moreover, Feminine privilege can manifest in legal and institutional contexts. For example, women are often more likely to receive leniency in legal proceedings, particularly in cases involving nonviolent offenses. 
Studies have shown that women generally receive lighter sentences compared to men for similar crimes, which can be attributed to societal perceptions of women as less threatening and more deserving of protection. Additionally, women are more likely to receive custody of children in divorce cases, reflecting traditional gender roles that position women as primary caregivers. While these examples illustrate some advantages, it is crucial to critically examine the underlying gender norms and biases that contribute to these disparities. In examining feminine privilege, it is essential to adopt an intersectional lens that considers how various forms of identity and systemic inequality interact. For instance, the privileges experienced by a white, middle-class, cisgender woman may differ vastly from those of a transgender woman or a woman of color. This intersectional approach allows for a more nuanced understanding of how privilege operates and highlights the importance of addressing broader structural issues that impact different groups in diverse ways. It is also important to recognize the limitations of the concept of feminine privilege. While certain advantages may be conferred upon individuals due to their femininity, these benefits are often context-specific and do not negate the pervasive and systemic nature of gender-based discrimination and inequality. For instance, while a woman may experience social privilege in personal relationships due to her nurturing qualities, she may simultaneously face gender-based barriers in her professional life, such as the gender pay gap or lack of representation in leadership positions. Feminine qualities are often culturally and socially defined, though they can vary widely across different societies and time periods. Traditionally, traits such as empathy, nurturing, sensitivity, and gentleness are often associated with femininity. These characteristics are frequently seen in roles that involve caregiving and emotional support, such as parenting or nursing, though it's important to note that these qualities are not exclusive to women and can be exhibited by anyone regardless of gender. Physical appearance also plays a significant role in traditional definitions of femininity. Clothing, hairstyles, and makeup choices can all contribute to a person being perceived as feminine. For example, wearing dresses, skirts, or blouses, along with long hair and the use of cosmetics, are often associated with a feminine appearance. However, these are societal constructs and can vary greatly depending on cultural norms and personal preferences. What do you think? Are you perceived as feminine or masculine? Let me know in the comments section. Stay bougie.